If we can figure out how gravity works at the level of the smallest subatomic particles, then maybe we can finish what Newton and Einstein started and form a complete picture of this mysterious force of gravity. To achieve this goal, we have to try to recreate the conditions of the Big Bang here on Earth and peer deep into the heart of the subatomic world. This place is Fermilab, and I used to work here. It's home to the Tevatron Particle Accelerator. The Tevatron basically works by bashing stuff together and seeing what comes out. What we do is we take protons, and we accelerate them around that way, and antimatter protons, send them around that way, and they pass by here 50,000 times a second, very close to the speed of light. And then we collide them together, we smash them together. It's through collisions like these that the nature of matter has been revealed. But the force of gravity still sits outside what we know. One of the ways we might get to the truth about gravity is to try and fit it into the beautiful framework we have that describes the subatomic world. Quantum mechanics predicts that the force of gravity should be transmitted by a particle. We've called this particle the graviton. If we could just find these gravitons, then we might at last arrive at a quantum theory of gravity, a universal theory that will work everywhere in the cosmos. For eight years, Greg Landsberg has been using Fermilab's particle accelerator to try to create gravitons. These particles, well, we haven't quite seen them, so what I'm telling you is we haven't just... Haven't quite seen them. Uh, that's right, it's, it's our hypothesis, so we don't quite know if this is true or not. It's not that we can shine light on gravitons to see them. So we have to find some other means. It's amazing that the way to see the graviton is by not observing it, by observing it's missing. To see something that's missing, Greg is effectively looking for missing energy. Typically, when you batch things together, the energy of the original particles should be the same as the total energy of all the particles coming out. But if you were to make a graviton in that collision, then our detectors are certainly not capable of seeing it. So the graviton will take energy away from the collision. Energy will appear to disappear. <laughs> So what this uh, picture tells us, it's called event display. The height of these bars is how much energy is released in this collision right. in that particular direction. So you've got a collision in the middle there and right. there's stuff spraying out. And so what we're trying to do is to sum all this energy to see if something is missing. If you look at this display, you see a lot of energy going in this direction, yeah. but very little on the other side. And this yellow bar, in fact, represents the fraction of energy which is missing. All right, so if, you see, so if you see that, that means there's something escaped. That's right. If gravitons are created, Greg believes the reason why they would disappear is because they vanish into a place beyond our reality, into some sort of extra dimension. Now, we're all familiar with the three dimensions of our world. You know, there's up and down and north and south and east and west. But what scientists like Greg are proposing is that there can be extra, hidden, unseen dimensions. It sounds ridiculous and it is impossible to picture, but theoretically it's possible. And it's also possible that gravitons, the particles of gravity, can spend most of their time in those extra dimensions. If gravitons really are created and they escape in these extra dimensions, we would never see them. Although it might sound like a very odd hypothesis, an odd concept, 
really nothing prevents us of thinking in this direction, especially if we can solve these mysteries. Newton could predict the effects of gravity. Einstein worked out why it exists. But by finding a graviton, we might at last truly understand gravity.